aromatics. So aromatics are vegetables and seasonings and spices that are going to personalize your dish. So like I said, we're doing a classic beef braised brisket here. So I'm going with the classic French mirepoix with a little bit of a twist because I can't help myself. So one of the most obviously well-known aromatics you always start, especially if you're gonna build your own flavor profile here, are something from the onion family. So onions, scallions, leeks. I'm using a red onion here. I really feel like they should call it a purple onion because it's purple, but I've been told by all my recipe editors from all my books that I've got to call it a red onion. So I'm using a red onion and that's kind of the only deviation. Otherwise, the classic French mirepoix is two parts onion to one part celery and one part carrots. Now, don't let that throw you for a loop. Anytime I'm in my house, the reason it's such a classic uh, flavor combination is because it's perfect, it's seamless, it's harmonious, it's like absolutely wonderful. So if you've got a little more carrot or a little more celery, it's fine and you're good to go. Just important as browning your brisket before you braise is browning your vegetables too. And quite like the brisket, the onions are gonna to start to caramelize and all of your celeries and your carrots, everything is going to continue to build the foundation of your sauce. And we're gonna add in our onions, our celery, and our carrots. I said I like to use a flat edge Spatula. This just helps to scrape up as you saute your veg. Now you want the pan to be hot. Saute actually means to jump. And you literally want your vegetables like jumping in the pan from the key to the pan. Otherwise, instead of caramelizing and browning, they just sort of start to absorb all of the oil. And that's when you get one of those unsavory bites of like a vegetable with like oil seeping out of your mouth. And at the same time, you just don't get the browning that we're looking for. So every once in a while, move them around. Also, a really important tip, cut your veggies all the same size so that they start to cook and caramelize and brown at the same speed. And again, it also depends the size that you cut your veggies if you're going to strain your sauce or not. I'm going to show you at the end how to strain and reduce the sauce to produce a really elegant sauce but my hubby loves the more rustic version. He's like, where are all those veggies I saw you cooking with? So like at a weeknight dinner, I actually just put the whole sauce with the veggies in. If I know I'm gonna do that, then I make them a little bit larger because then they'll withstand the longer cooking time. So we need about 10 to 12 minutes. Oh, I love the smell. I feel so bad you're not here. But you're gonna make this at home, right? I know you're gonna make this at home. If you're with me in this course, that means you're committed to amazing brisket. And this one, you're not gonna pass up one of my three favorite recipes. And you have to master the classic before you move on. So I think it's always fun to make this first and then make it your own. So remember I told you to keep your salt and pepper near you while you cook, season liberally and season often again to develop, this is all about if you haven't caught on, layers of flavor. Lots of recipes will tell you to season at the end to taste. You should season at the end to taste. That's when you're adjusting, assuming you've seasoned all along. It's just not the same at the end. So you want to, at the different stages of cooking with each addition, so now we've just added, we salt and peppered our brisket and we're gonna salt and pepper our veggies. And again, then usually you have to do minimal seasoning at the end. Okay, now another essential and obvious ingredient for aromatics is garlic. But I think you're going to notice that I'm adding it just at the end. Whether you mince it or whether you slice it, the point is burnt garlic is a bitter. And there's no way, no matter what size, unless you're putting in whole cloves, and we're not doing that right now, that it can withstand the same 10 to 12 minutes that your more heartier vegetables can. So we're just adding a little bit of garlic now for the last minute. And also think about that when you're working with your spices. You have to consider the size and what you're sauteing. Spices just need a, you know, 30 second, 30 to 60 seconds to sort of wake up and release their flavors. So we throw in the garlic. And the next thing we're gonna do is three tablespoons of tomato paste. Now, I love fresh ingredients, but no cook's kitchen is complete without some quality canned tomato products. Tomato paste, whole plum tomatoes, and sun-dried tomatoes, I always have on hand. They add such a rich mouthfeel to dishes. And again, this is part of the classic like pot roast or brisket preparation. I'm gonna put in three generous tablespoons. A quick sear on the paste. We want it to turn dark red, but not black. 